Today, we're going to discuss a case where a boy solved his own murder. Hi, I'm Mindy. Welcome to the Missing Link channel. Each true crime case and unsolved mystery is just one missing link away from being solved. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video and help us find that missing link. My 11 year old son actually came across this story and asked me to cover it. So of course I had to say yes. This video focuses around reincarnation. Britannica.com defines reincarnation, also called transmigration, as a rebirth of the aspect of an individual that persists after bodily death, whether it be consciousness, mind, the soul, or some other entity, in one or more successive existences. Depending upon their tradition, these existences may be animal, human, spiritual, or in some instances, vegetable. While belief in reincarnation is most characteristic of South Asian and East Asian traditions, it also appears in the religious and philosophical thoughts of local religions. In some ancient Middle Eastern religions as well, as in such modern religious movements. The ancient Greeks believed that a pre-existent soul survived bodily death and is later reincarnated in a human or other body, eventually receiving release from the cycle of birth and death and regaining its former pure state. Plato in the 5th century BC believed in an immortal soul that participates in frequent incarnations. This story we are covering today takes place in Syria. Syria is located in Western Asia and is located south of Turkey and west of Iraq. The story comes from a doctor who was a witness to the events we're discussing in this case. The doctor's name was Eli Lash. He lived in Israel and was known to be interested in studying reincarnation. This story focuses on a boy who was born in Syria to the Druze people. The boy's name has never been released. Britannica describes Druze as a Middle Eastern religious sect characterized by an electric system of doctrines and by a cohesive and loyalty among its members that have enabled them to maintain for centuries their close-knit identity and distinctive faith. The Druze people believe in reincarnation or transmigration of the soul. The boy was born with an unusual birthmark. It was described as a red, long birthmark on his head. I picture it as a long, thin mark on his forehead, but we are not for sure because it says on his head, not necessarily on his forehead. Perhaps it was even on the back of his head. The mark could be thicker than I envision as well, but we do know that it was described as a red, long birthmark on his head. Researchers of reincarnation believe that previous life memories are most common in young children. Perhaps it is easier for them to remember a past life since not as much time has passed 
since they left their previous life. Some children, as young as two years old, have recalled a previous life memory. A research study found that the most common age group for children with previous life memory were between the ages of two and five. Some of these previous memories began to fade around age seven. In the children that recalled a previous life, some even discussed injuries, many that led to death in their previous life, and this injury corresponds with a birthmark or birth defect that they have in their current life. The injuries they described in their past life include stab wounds, gunshot wounds, or some violent event. In his early childhood, the boy in this story spoke numerous times about a previous life. At age three, the boy claimed that in a previous life, he was killed by an ax blow to the head, exactly where his birthmark was. He told the story not only to his parents, but to other family members, as well as the elders of the village. The people that heard the boy's story seemed to believe that he lived in the same general area in the previous life, perhaps in one of the neighboring villages. The family, as well as the people in the village, began doing research to see if they could determine who the boy was in the past life. This is when Dr. Lausch was brought into the picture. The boy, his father, other relatives, some village elders, and Dr. Lausch set off to look at other villages nearby to see if the boy recognized the village, the houses, or any of the people. At the first village, the boy didn't recognize anything. Same with the second village. However, when they arrived at the third village, things were different. The boy began recognizing places and stated that this was where he used to live. It was as if seeing the familiar surroundings opened up a portal. He began remembering more and more. He knew people's name in the village and he even remembered his previous first and last name. Then the boy said he remembered who killed him and he told them the murderer's first and last name. The group began speaking with people in the village to see if the boy's story of being murdered sounded familiar. A man in the village recognized the name that the boy recalled as his name in his past life. The villager had known this man. He explained that this man had disappeared without a trace four years earlier. Over the years, the people in the village figured that the man was no longer alive, that perhaps he ran into trouble due to conflict between Israel and Syria, and maybe he was killed. The group began walking through the village. When they passed one home, the boy stated that that home was his previous residence. This was the home of the man he claimed to be in a previous life. 
the group drew attention and many people had congregated around the group to see what exactly was happening. The boy noticed a man in the crowd and he approached him. The boy called the man by name. In fact, the boy got the name correct. He then said, I used to be your neighbor. We had a fight and you killed me with an ax. Dr. Lash later described this encounter. The man turned white as a sheet when the boy accused the man of murder. Then the boy said, I even know where you buried my body. The boy walked on and the group, including the man, the boy accused of killing him, followed the boy. They walked to a nearby field. The boy approached a pile of stones. He then said, he buried my body under these stones and the ax over there, pointing to another location. The group began digging under the stones to see if the boy was correct. They found a skeleton under the soil. The skeleton was of a man and there was an injury to the skull. This injury was described as a linear split in the skull. It was later determined to be consistent with a blow of an ax. The skeleton also was clothed. The clothes were described as something a farmer would wear. Clothes, the man, the boy claimed to be in a previous life would likely wear. The group then headed to where the boy stated the ax was buried. They began digging in this area as well and they found exactly what they were looking for, an ax. After the skeleton was found and the ax was discovered, the group turned to the man that the boy accused of this crime. I can't believe he was still there, but apparently he was. He confessed and stated that he did kill his neighbor and buried him in that exact spot four years earlier. The accused murderer was then turned over to the authorities, but there is no details about what happened next to this man. If this story is based in fact, the boy solved his own murder, but that is a big if. We do not know the exact time period that this story took place, but it most likely took place sometime in the mid to late 1900s. Dr. Lash was born in 1929. He became a medical doctor and was described as a prominent physician. In 1998, when the doctor was 69 years old, Dr. Lash told this story to a writer named Trutz Hardo, who included the story in a book entitled Children Who Have Lived Before. The book was published in 2005. This story does lack a lot of information. The boy's name, the accused murderer's name, the village where the story took place, and any names of witnesses besides Dr. Lash. 
we can't ask the doctor any more details because he passed away in 2009, 11 years after telling this story. What do you think of this story? Do you think it is based in fact? Is it completely made up or is it just an urban legend? Do you believe in past life experiences and bringing those experiences with you into a new life? Do you believe in reincarnation? Could the parents in this story influence their son in any way? Since the religion strongly believed in reincarnation and the boy was born with a birthmark, did the parents invent this story that their son had been killed with an ax in a previous life to match his birthmark? Did they tell their son this story from a young age and he believed it to be a fact? Did the parents know of a man from a neighboring village disappearing? If this is the case, they obviously didn't make this story up for any fame or fortune because they never told their story. The story just came from the doctor. Or did they do it because of their religion or beliefs? Of course, we will never know because the family has never been identified and the doctor has since passed away. There is one other thing that I find far-fetched in this story. So, if you are going about your business one day and a kid approaches you, knew your name, and accused you of killing him in a previous life, wouldn't that freak you out a little? Would you just follow this kid and his group down to where he claims the body was buried? Would you stick around why they began digging up the dirt? I would be long gone, even if I was innocent. There has never been any records of any court hearings found in this case, but I don't know much about the legal system in Syria. But in the United States, it would be hard to bring any of this evidence found by this group into any court hearing. Since no authorities were on scene when the skeleton or ax was found. Without this evidence, it may be hard to get a conviction. That is, unless the man did confess to the crime. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there were some authorities helping that day. Do you have any birthmarks? Do you think anything could have happened to you in a previous life? Have you ever had any strange memories, perhaps from a past life? Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button so I know you enjoy hearing about mysterious urban legends. Also, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you will be notified of my future videos. And follow me on social media as well to see what I am working on next. As always, have a wonderful day. Watch out for each other and keep looking for that missing link. Love ya and see you in my next video.